There's something terrifying yet so relieving about waking up in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone reception. That's mainly because I have three kids at home, Sarah, my wife, and my mom that I can't look after, but I'm gonna trust everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna make the most out of this trip and just enjoy myself. Now take a look at this trick. When you're rigging up your fly rod, you could just put your mono or fluoro through the guides and pull it through, but what happens so often, somehow you just drop it and the fly line just slips through and pulls the whole leader through. But here's a little trick to avoid that in the future. You just loop over your fly line just like that, avoiding your leader and your tippet. And as you thread it up, if you happen to drop it, you're like, oh man, dropped it but it still gets stuck there because the little bit of memory in the fly line. So I could bring it up. Oh, dropped it, but it's not going anywhere. So that's just more of a thing to save you frustration. And this is what I've decided to tie on. A triple beaded stone fly. This will be able to get the line down fast without using split shots. And beneath that, just because there's so many small flies flying around, I gotta imagine that those are in the water. So I'm using this little thing. It should imitate a little fly very well. And it seems to be that there's two schools of thought when I go fly fishing. If I don't use an indicator, there's always some comments saying, you gotta use an indicator, bro. And I'm like, all right, I'll use an indicator. And then when I use an indicator, people are like, how could you use an indicator? You're basically spin fishing at that point. Well, today I'm gonna be using an indicator and I'm not gonna be using an indicator. And it doesn't really matter to me as long as I catch fish. I've caught them both ways. Looks like it's only about three feet here, but because the stone fly is so heavy with those three beads, I'm only gonna set my line about three feet also. Fish on, first cast. First cast, baby, what did we hook it on? Well, geez. That was a pleasant surprise, man. First cast and it's a good fish. Heck yeah. Get the line up here on the reel. Now we can fight it as we would a normal fish. Heck yeah, dude, perfectly set. I do have a net in the car, I should have just brought it. But let's go over here so we can land it in the shallows. Oh man. Oh, he's in a rock. He went into a rock. No, he's out. And tire him out over here. See if I can jump closer to land. Woo! First cast, man. That bobber just went straight down. So does that count? Was that bobber fishing? Swallowed the stonefly. Wow. What a fish. What a gorgeous first fish. This ain't no joke. Look at that fish. How gorgeous is that? Look at the spots. Look at the patterns. Look at the colors. Look at the tail. That's a keeper all day. But this happens so many times when you're fishing for trout. First cast, you catch a keeper. You want to eat it later, but you don't have anywhere to put it. So I brought along this thing that I thought of almost a year ago that's going to solve this problem. Check that out. This is a small one to two fish cooler. It's insulated with four, three centimeters or four centimeters of insulation. I can drop him straight in the middle, fill this with water, and I could fit two of those things, but that is the perfect size. And I can close this. And since this water is coming straight from the frozen mountain tops of the Sierras, all this water is damn near ice cold. And that'll keep it in there fresh all day. Now I can just catch and release the rest of the day if I want to because I know I've got a meal right there. Well, I'm gonna dispatch this fish properly, but I just wanna get another look at it because it is a specimen. It's so pretty and so immaculate that it makes me wanna release it. But I know that I'm doing the sustainable thing with harvesting one and releasing the rest. Now the only thing to do is dispatch him, bleed him, gut him, and keep him cool in that cold water cooler. Bonking him, bleeding him, 
Bonk him first so he doesn't feel anything. Now I'll brain him just in case he comes back to life from being knocked out. Next, I guess we're gonna see what's in his stomach. So I cut her up. First thing I see is trout eggs, which will not go to waste. I will be eating those. What a healthy fish. Seriously, what a healthy fish. I'm gonna take the gills out. Just like a salmon in a smaller version. Cutting around the top. Cutting around the bottom here, closer to the throat. God, wouldn't that be crazy if a bear just came out of nowhere and attacked me, or a mountain lion? Now also, just like a salmon, I clean that bloodline out. And the little bit in her stomach, what do we have here? Lots of black bugs as usual. Oh, there's a crawfish right there. Look at that. It's a little foreshadowing of what we're about to do in a second. You see that little guy coming out to say hi? Hey, there's a couple of them here. Let's see if I can get them out here. There's one right there. What's up, dude? Ow, pinched me, you punk. Yeah, we're gonna get some of these today, too. That one's kind of small, though. Trout in the trout bag. Fill it with water. And that'll be good all day. That's the winner right there. A triple beaded stonefly. They work so well, I think, because sometimes when you gotta use the split shots, it just doesn't look natural. And fishing in Alaska for steelhead, having that heavy stonefly to get it down fast was the secret. And that's why I bought this. So that's why I'm always gonna carry in my arsenal from now on. Some heavy stuff, whether it's stoneflies or whatever else. Now let's do our second cast. Does that count because it was on the indicator? And now the real question, do I feel bad for catching it on an indicator? Absolutely not. So I guess there's your answer. I got the wind on my back, which makes casting a whole lot easier. And I know with that stone fly going down so fast that I am in the strike zone whenever I want to be. Almost immediately, as soon as that indicator hits the ground, hits the water, I almost know for certain that that stone fly has brought the flies down to where I want it. That's a great drift right here. A great drift, a great drift, a great drift. Nothing there though, it's drifted through the rocks here. You know, it's happened before and it'll probably happen again. Catching a fish on the first or second cast and then you go basically the whole trip without catching another. Nice that I know I can have a meal later on. I'm moving on. We got a lot of stuff to do today. Seems like I can't evade the cliffs no matter where I go, whether it's camping or ocean fishing. Now I know for a fact that there are a lot of crawfish in here and I don't want to stop here and fish for those things yet because I got a lot of exploring to do. I've got about 15 miles of road to navigate on that I've never been before. It's all a brand new adventure, but I don't want to waste my time. So I'm going to try to make a makeshift crawfish trap. And I have no idea if it's going to work because I've never done it before and I've never seen anyone else do it yet either. The first thing I'm going to do is take this two and a half gallon water bottle, water, water jug and cut some holes in it just so I can put a few rocks inside. I feel like that should do the trick. About four medium sized rocks in there. I'm gonna do a bunch of three sided openings. Kind of just like this here. Cutting down, cutting down, then across on the bottom. Then I can kind of bend it in a little bit. So the crawfish, I'm hoping they'll come in and they just won't know how to get out. Hoping I can get a few like this at least. So I'm gonna do one on that side, another one over here, big one over here. 
Then I'll do a slit on the top and that's where I'm gonna keep my bacon. So I'll just hang a bacon from there. I'll hang another bacon from here. Maybe another one from here. And then I'll have a couple on the bottom. And just in case it falls on its side like that, which is quite possible, I'll do another entrance over here. And if this doesn't work, I've got plan B, okay? Don't worry, don't worry. Do another one on this side. And with our bacon, I'm just shoving them into those cracks I made on top, trying to let some hang there. I'm also just putting some inside around the rocks, about six or seven pieces. All right, this trap is loaded up. Can you see the bacon in there? hanging. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll just throw this down there and make sure all the trap doors are in position. Okay, hopefully nobody comes by sees this even though they're probably not going to be able to get it anyway. And hopefully it doesn't float and it sinks right to the bottom and it gets into the right position. All right, sinking, 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 sinking went on its side though. I'm gonna retrieve that later. But now let's continue on down to about 15 miles and just explore it. Never been down these roads before. No idea where I'm at. No idea if this leads to a river. But that's always the fun part. Not knowing what's behind the next corner. quite a hike down but there's an amazing spot looks like a very very deep concentrated hole where I won't need the bobber slash indicator I'm thinking if I fall here at least it's just gonna be more of a slide hopefully there's no snakes ah. oh here we go here we go Woo. Oh yeah, that might be tough to get back up. That thing is steep. Since it's so deep here, I mean, I'm thinking it's gotta be at least 10 feet deep. I'm gonna take the bobber off completely. And then I'm gonna kinda do the same thing, Euro nymph it. Just hold my line out and keep it tight. And when it goes down or if I feel anything, I can do a nice little hook set. Man, this is what dreams are made of right here. All right, first cast, letting it sink. Oh, fish on, he came out of nowhere, man. Oh, that was so cool. He came out of nowhere and just attacked that thing out of the side, right out of the side of the cliff. Damn, I saw every second of that. Oh, here's another one. He's on it, he's right next to it, but he doesn't want it. Oh, he's on, oh, he's on, it's a good one, it's a good one. Yeah, baby, woo, woo. What is this? Oh, this is not even a, what is this thing? This looks like a bass, maybe. Huh, is it? Dude, there's a big fish down there. It is a bass. Oh, it came off, dude. What the heck? There's a bass down here. I probably really don't need this wetsuit, but I feel a whole lot safer with it. It's like its own personal flotation device, so I'm gonna change, I'll be right back. First thing we're gonna do, go check our trap. Ooh, that's cold. Ooh, that is cold. cold in there. I got 
got nothing in the trap, but there are a few crayfish around. So we use the bacon and the fishing rod and grab them and put it in our dive bag. I'm not 100% sure if it's legal to take these with just hook and line, so I'm not using a hook. I've got a snap swivel here. And that's how I'm holding the bacon on. This was just so fun last time that I gotta try it again. This is the haul so far. Maybe about seven or eight good size ones. And there's a couple really big ones that I saw. So I'm gonna go back in there and try to get the haul up to about 20. Sun is starting to set. It's gonna be the first meal of the day. This should be a pretty simple meal. I'm gonna start by boiling some water to get the crawfish cooked. Boil for one, some corn, and some potato. I'm gonna throw in the potatoes now because I know they'll take longer to cook. Got some hot links also. And I'm using that today. That'll be our seasoning for the boil. Well, almost boiling already. I'm gonna dump a bunch of this seasoning in there and probably the whole damn thing. All right, it is starting to boil now. Now I just had a southern accent come on over me. I'm gonna throw those crawfish in here. So let it boil real good. Oh man, I don't think all these crawfish are gonna fit in this pan right here. But we're gonna try. Well, you know what? It looks like some of these crawfish just might get another chance just because I don't have enough room. And that's a lot of food there. So I'm gonna get the big ones and I'm gonna to toss them out. It's a lucky day. All right, guys. You survived. You made it. You made it. Go on home. Find a new home. You're free. You're free, y'all. All right, we got potatoes boiling, crawfish boiling. I also wanted to do a Cajun style type of rice, but my other burner's not working. I'm still gonna try to make some rice. Very important to rinse it or the consistency just won't come out right. Now instead of just regular old water, I'm gonna use the water from the boil and hopefully get it kind of like a Cajun style rice. Oh no, I'm covered the top. Some seasoned rice, hopefully that turns out well. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this crawfish is done. I'm gonna leave it in the hot water. And next I'm gonna cook this rice. Get that going at a nice simmer. And let's check on our fish. Oh man, I forgot about our trout eggs. I could just throw that in the hot water and it should cook just like that. I'll get it deep in there so, right, so it firmed up immediately. Now it kind of happened just how I was hoping it wouldn't. 
that first fish catching it and then not catching anything after that. But that is a good looking trout and we're gonna have rice, fish, crawfish, all of that. Just gonna cut this in half. We're gonna do it on the pan. Let's cut the tail off. Cut off the fins while I'm here so I don't have to worry about that later. Cut the head off. Don't need that head anymore. Back to the crayfish. We'll just go half. Right, should be another five, six minutes. But this crawfish, he's just looking at me. And I can't deny him. He's just begging to be eaten. Now, I know there's a poop sack. And from what I remember reading, you can take off this side fin thing, the next side one, then you should be able to twist the middle one and the whole poop sack should come out. Oh, I had it, but it came off, dang. Let's see how this meat is. definitely cooked oh yeah nice chunky piece right there but it does have that poop line in the butt so let me take that out there we go all right no seasoning or anything let's see how it tastes mmm dude that's just so satisfying after literally eight hours of not eating anything, only drinking water. The satiation you get through your whole body is just bringing energy back. Ooh. Do I really need to wait for this rice? Can I just dig in? I'm just gonna dig in a little bit here and there. Here's another one calling my name. What's up, dude? Now I'm gonna see if I can get that again. I'm gonna break this one off, break this one off. Now let's twist, let's twist it, twist it and pull and hold tight and pull. Come on, oh dang it, breaks again. Well, that didn't work. Mm-hmm, oh yeah, man. Four or five of those on a fork, just dipped in some butter. Mm, munch down like that. Can't get no better than that. What a good day. Really great day. Uh, we're not done quite yet, but just want to say, as always, thank you for watching. It's been a while since I've been here and I was reluctant to come out here because every time I come out here, something bad always happens. Like that one time I found the missing person. Another time I talked about my dad passing away. Another time, my mom getting a brain tumor. Another time, I almost fell off a cliff. My bike flipped upside down. Another time, I was using my ax and I missed the wood and it almost hit my shin. Today, I lost the cord for my camera for the wireless mic, so that's why the audio was changed a little bit. Something always goes wrong here, so I was a little reluctant to come out, but I'm glad I did. This first trout was so worth it. What a great day. And then a mountain lion comes and eats me right now. And then the lost footage is what you see. Hopefully not. I do have my 10 millimeters, so just in case. All right, should be ready soon. This rice should be done. Let's check her out. Woo. Oh, even a little burn on the bottom. No, is it? No, dude. Little salty, a little salty. Well, the last thing to finish it off, gonna have this fish. I was gonna throw some blackened seasoning on the fish, but since that rice is so salty, I'm just gonna have the fish just like this and use the seasoning from that rice. Good thing about doing a crab boil, everything in the boil is still warm, piping hot actually. So, cook this fish up. And we'll have our full course meal out here in the woods. Nice little brown on there. Woo. 
Ooh, look at that meat come right off. Take this bone out with all the small bones. You can take off this spine. And all that meat peel right off. All right, we've got a boneless trout, crawfish boil, some Cajun type of rice. I'd say we're living good out here. We're thriving. Oh, I don't even care that my shoes are wet. It's just, wow, this is the life. This is the life, relaxing. It's like the weight of the world just lifted off my shoulders as soon as I put my feet in the water. Okay, well, time to eat. I've been waiting to eat this corn on the cob. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's another reason that they do a crawfish boil. Because when you boil it, all that stuff is under the water still and doesn't give all the bees and all those huge insects time to, you know, sit on top of it all. I don't think there's much else to see here. You've seen it all, cooked the food. One thing going on behind the scenes, I dropped off my boat to Jim at Real Custom Boat Works, and he's helping me fix a couple things on the windshield, putting suspension seats on, tackle box holders, weight holders, a bunch of different things. So that boat is gonna be in top-notch shape, ready to go for tuna. Hopefully I can get that boat back in a week or two. But while I wait for that, I'm just gonna to stick to shore videos, camping videos, cliff videos, going back in time too, going back to all these nostalgic areas. Spend the whole day off my phone. When was the last time I did that? Jeez. It's like a detox from everything. Ah. Peace, y'all.